The Black Business Council says that black talent counts for little in South Africa. A newly released report shows that white males still have a tight grip on the reins of business in this country. The 16th Employment Equity Report, released by the Commission for Employment Equity, shows that South Africa's workforce is still racialized and gendered, it says, despite 16 years of transformational effort, efforts. Black people are concentrated at the lower levels, with the white group occupying decision-making positions. Positions. The BBC now says it's clear that employees are not taking advantage of incentives such as skills levies to invest in black talent. Let's show you uh, the picture literally. Here you can see uh, that there was a decrease in white people holding top management positions. But it's not much. We're talking about 1% from 70 to about 69%. Conversely, there was an increase in the number of black people holding top positions. But again, as you can see, a less than a percent increase there. If we go then down a level to senior management, again uh, the trend, 59.3 uh, down to 58. So a little bit of a, a drop there, a little bit of a climb here, but you can see just over half a percent. We then move down uh, to skilled professionals, and here there are signs of inroads. Uh, there are some significant uh, changes. Professionals qualified. Here you can see that the African group has gone up to 41%. For the first time, it now is bigger uh, than the the group, uh, the tally of white professional uh, qualified people going down uh, from 41.9 to 38. So here is where the difference is. And let's take a quick look just to show you how we're faring uh, in terms of the gender balance. And here we come back to top management level. You can see uh, that the male group has gone down from 79 to 78.6. So really hardly any change. Uh, women go going up slightly, half a percent, really nothing uh, that we can call great shakes there. Let's put these numbers into context now. I'm joined by the chair for the uh, Commission for Employment and Equity, Tabia Kabinde. Thank you uh, for joining us, uh, Ms. Kabinde. Uh, looking me. at the top levels uh, in terms of race, are you dismayed after so long, so little change? Indeed, we are dismayed, but I must say that it has been a pattern that we've noticed over the years, that the progress is really quite small and almost insignificant. And it, it, it's an indication of the, the will to transform, that there isn't much of a will, and it's a trend that we're picking up year on year. So as one listener said, we shouldn't act shocked. And I must say that we are not shocked because we see that the pattern mm. continues and it's giving us very important information. You, you do see that there are black professionals, uh, at, not at the bottom, you know, they, they, they're professionals, but they're not at the, the top levels. Are they able to move up? Are we going to see a big move now looking at those numbers and it just has to filter up? Or are you seeing that there's a block? Ideally, that should be the right picture, that when promoting, one would work from the lower level to and move people up. you see a trend moving You should up. see the trend. But what is disconcerting is that when we look at workplace movement, we see that there's also a trend to promote people that are white. Traditionally, white males and females are being promoted, they're being skilled, and therefore they become the first in line to move into the next level. Is this racism or is it about skills and we have to look at education? Is it about experience because white people have dominated for so long? I would be loath to say it's skills because if you look at the professional level, that is where we identify the skill. So when we talk professionally qualified, we're talking about people who have the skill to transition to the next level. So it's, one cannot make the assumption that it's only just skill. Mm. I'm beginning to believe, and as a commission, we're beginning to believe that there are deeper reasons for this. And in my mind, I think the reasons are more psychosocial than anything else, where to a large extent, as a people, we have certain unconscious biases that impact on the way we make decisions to promote people. Okay, which is racism, basically. One can say that. The, the Black Business Council released a statement today. They, they um, like many, are, are pushing for something 
punitive uh, for, for companies that don't transform. Uh, they say that some of the measures you've got are, are like a slap on the wrist. What's, what's your response to that? The measures that we have in place have been a result of the amendment to the Act, which came into being in August 2014. So for us, we're still watching the impact that it will have on, on, on the way organizations react and respond to the changes. Well, How what are the measures? Because I know um, for companies vying for government tenders, there it's strong. You know, you have to have your scorecard in place. Uh, you have to have ownership uh, levels in place. But a lot of people are confused about what, what about everybody else? Um, you know, companies that, that just seem to be so slow in transforming. My experience is that it's not only government that would ask for a BEE certificate. And one of the things that we've done is to work quite closely with the BEE Council for the exact reason that that is actually where the tar hits the road. That's when the, the owner begins to feel the negative impact of not transforming. So what we've done as a commission is we've made sure that there is alignment and synergy between what we do and what the BEE Council is doing. So if your employment equity is not in place, if your ownership is not in place, your score in terms of BEE will go down and that will result in you not getting the business mm -hmm. that you should be getting. Over and above that, there are specific punitive measures that are related to the Employment Equity Act. The smallest would be 1.5 million or about 2% of your turnover, depending on, on which is greater of the two. All right. So, so companies are, are paying up, uh, but it doesn't seem to, to be working. Do you, do you think we need stronger measures? I think we need to watch the implementation of the current punitive measures and see how that transforms what we're doing. I also think that we need to just move beyond just saying, this is what we'll do, this is the stick that we will use. Yes, it's effective and it should be used and we will use it. Mm -hmm. But we're beginning to believe that there should be more dialogue between us and, and, and corporate South Africa to find out what the barriers are what the obstacles are, and to propose certain inter interventions that will drive the transformation. Beyond that, we will take the information that we will have collected and give it back to the minister in the form of advice as to what should be done differently to ensure that the transformation that we're looking for really takes place. I, I guess the dialogue does start when these um, alarming figures come out. What, what is your message to corporate South Africa? My message is the fact that diversity in its, in its purest form ensures that companies benefit. When you have a diverse work, workforce, the reality is you have more ideas, you're serving the population that you have, and customers are thus attracted to you. So transformation makes business sense. I'm loath to always talk about transformation as a legislative imperative. I think we also need to look at it from the perspective that it makes economic sense. Research after research proves the fact, and it's about time organizations sit up and take note of that and ensure that they do better year on year by transforming to look like the, the total population of our country. I agree with you. It's so clear. It's good business. Thank you for your time this evening. That was the chair of the Commission for Employment Equity, Tabia Kabinde.